So a quick video on the 2021 paper one multiple choice questions. First question there then, what is the correct formula for trade payables days? So it's trade payables over credit purchases, not times 100, remember that's a percent. Trade payables over credit purchases times 365, the answer is B. The accountant is of a business is considering changing its depreciation method from 25% straight line to 40% reducing balance. Which accounting concept would this conflict with? Well, if we're changing the method, it's going to have to be consistency. It can't possibly be anything else. Let's have a look. Whoops, too many pages. All right, question three. Um, which is not a purpose of international accounting standards? Well, it is to improve the comparability and the reliability of financial statements. It isn't to provide a set of rules which suits all companies. The answer there is definitely going to be C. Um, it is to provide a standard treatment of accounting issues. So it doesn't provide a set of rules. It's not uh, legally obliging. It just gives guidance as to how things should be treated. Right, following information is available for a sole trader. We've got some information to put together a, a capital account. So I'm going to suggest we do that little calculation here. So we want the opening capital, 26,500. I think we're trying to find the missing profit or loss. So add the profit. We don't know what that is. Let's put a question mark there. We do know, though, that they've got some capital introduced. Probably should have put that in before the profit. Hey ho. Um, and we know that they've taken drawings, which are deducted in the capital account, 12,300. And the closing capital is 36,700. So if we work backwards, reversing the signs, 36,700 plus 12,300 minus 3,000 and minus 26,500 is 19,500 pounds profit. So the answer for number four is D. Okay, number five then, which will be applied if there is no formal partnership agreement in place? So remember, no interest on capital, no interest on drawings. You can just pay interest um, on loans at 5% per annum. So I think it's going to be um, B for number five. Let's just check these out though. No, that's not right. We don't pay interest on capital. Um, nope, so it's definitely B for that one. So remember, if there's no partnership agreement, nobody gets interest on capital. No interest is charged on drawings, but if a partner loans the partnership money, it's not very well coloured in, is it, that one, then we can um, give them 5% interest, deducted as an expense in the income statement. Right then, correct formula for dividend yield. So this is the dividend per share, isn't it, divided by the market price per share. So it's how much um, the share is currently earning. Um, so the return on a share is your dividends. So we take the dividend per share divided by the current market price. And it's a percentage, so it's times 100. So I think the answer there is going to be um, A. None of the rest of them make much sense. This one's upside down. Um, so yeah, definitely for six, it is dividend per share divided by market price per share. Okay, number seven then. Bilal and Ben are in partnerships, sharing profits and losses in the ratio of three to two respectively. Before he joins the partnership, the following valuations are agreed. So we've got old valuations and new valuations. So we've got some assets. That was the original value. I'm going to suggest we just find out what the old value was for these assets. So this is about revaluation when we um, have a change in the partnership. 200 plus 11 plus 5 plus 15. So 231. So there is an increase in the valuation of £26,000. Okay, and it's in the ratio of three to two, and we're trying to find out how Ben's going to benefit. So remember that the increase, oops, it's not very clear at all, 26,000 is going to be split in the ratio three to two. So the total of that is five, and we do it in the right order. So Bilal would get three fifths, Ben gets two fifths. So times two over five means that he's going to get 10,400. So the answer for number seven is A. Um, a business has completed a physical stock take with a figure of 17,444. Not included in the stock take was an item returned by a customer. The selling price was 270 and the business marks up um, goods by 50%. What is the inventory valuation? So we've got to take that 1744 and add whatever this is, but not at the selling price, it's at the cost price. Now remember when we do um, markup, the gross profit percentage in this case is 50%, and that is applied to cost of sales, which is the 100% figure which means that the selling price is 150%. So if we divide the um, £270 by 150, 
and then multiply it by 100, that will give us the cost price. We could do the same for gross profit is 90. But in this case, we're adding back 180, the cost price, so plus 180, 17444 plus 180 is 17624. So the answer there is number is A. Oh no, sorry, I've gone completely dyslexic. <laughs> my numbers, it's very early in the morning. Sorry, the answer is 17624. That's what I got in my calculator. I just mis misread it. I do wish they wouldn't do that, but uh, there we go. My bad. Right, let's have a look at number nine. Um, a business received its bank statement with a balance of 236 debits. So remember, in our books, that's going to be a credit balance equivalent to an overdraft at the end of the month. After completing a bank reconciliation statement, two items were not shown um, on the bank statement but had been recorded in the cash book. So a check payment to a supplier of £87 and a check received from a customer. So if we start with the statement balance, of 236. Actually, in our books, it's overdrawn £236. Um, so the cheque payment to a supplier, £87, will actually make that overdraft worse. So we add that on. Cheque received from a customer, though, minus 190 will actually reduce the overdraft. So 236, oops, 236 plus 87 minus 190 is an overdraft of £133. So the answer for number nine is A. Um, number 10, a business has just completed its first year of trading on the 30th of April 2021. Following information is available. We've got discounts received, checks paid to trade payables, total of cash and credit purchases. 40% of all purchases are made on credit. So let's times that by 40% to find out what the credit purchases are because we're going to try and work out trade payables at the end of the year. So 45,000 times 40% means that our credit purchases are £18,000. We've received discount of £500, so let's take that away because that will reduce it. And we've paid £12,000 to the suppliers, so we're actually going to end up owing them £5,500. So the answer, the answer there is A. Thanks very much for watching.